the love of our God that He has for us. Jesus, you have given it all. You have given it all for us. You purchased us with a price. You paid in your blood that we might be one with you, that we might be called the sons and daughters of the true, the one true God. Jesus, you are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of our time. Worthy. Jesus, hallelujah. Name above every name. Lord, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Lord of all. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I could just praise Him all day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. That your grace covers. That you have found us. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, that you give us new life. Yes, Lord Jesus. How many of you know God doesn't do anything halfway? He doesn't do it halfway. He doesn't leave us hanging. He doesn't leave us wondering. He didn't just give us new life. He gave us eternal life. He didn't, just, he didn't just offer it up. He gave it for free to whosoever will. All we have to do is say, yes, Lord. Thank you that I am a new creature. I am, after the second Adam, innocent, one with you, filled with the power of your Holy Spirit. Purchased with the price. You have a purpose and a plan for every one of us. Yes. Jesus. You called us by name, Lord. You hand selected your chosen people. Called to be priests and kings. A holy nation. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. I do believe we're having Sunday school. Kids want to go downstairs. We're just going to keep having church up here. <laughs> Woo. I'm going to steal one of Tim's lines. In the beginning, God. Right, Tim? It's one of my favorite things that you say. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. You know what? In the end, God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and everything in between. He is everything. Oh, when we put our hope and our trust in Him, He will not, He cannot fail us. He cannot. But then the world comes crashing in, doesn't it? Every day something happens. We see something. We hear something. Somebody says something. And we forget who we are in a moment. We forget whose we are in a moment. So this morning I want to talk about, I want to go back to the beginning. What's the first thing God did in the beginning? He created the heavens and the earth, and He said, let there be light. And He separated the light from the darkness. In everything God begins, He separates the light from the darkness. In our lives, He separates the light from the darkness, the life from the death. So that's where we should begin, to separate the light from the darkness. Yes. And I want to talk today about the light. Because this is not just the sun shining in the sky. This is the daybreak, the dawn, the morning light that rises and gives us hope for a brand new day. Amen. This is the light, the lamp of life that shines in each of us. Life, eternal. That lamp that guides us. The light of prosperity. The light that leads us into every blessing. That he has set before us. He has given us all things church. Yes. He has promised us blessings. Because Jesus Christ has fulfilled the covenant. Yes. And Deuteronomy chapter 28. All of those blessings are ours. Yes. If we will be in the light. We are in the light of prosperity. Yes. The light of instruction. We live by that light. 
It's the word that guides us, right? Mm -hmm. Constantly leading us and guiding us. Yep. The light of face. That's Jesus. Yes. Jesus is that light for us. We see his face, right? And Jehovah, he is the light of Israel. Yep. And what did he take? He took away the darkness, misery, destruction, death, yes. ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, yes. darkness, yes. obscurity. He took all of that away. He said, I'm separating it. You are children of light. Yes. All of that is gone. All of that darkness is gone. So let's go to Psalm 119, 105, Peter. We're going to start because that light is that lamp, right? That light is everything. That light should be the first thing that we seek because that's where it begins with God's creation. That's where it still today begins when he's creating and doing a new thing. It begins in the light. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. Oh, I, I, I was picturing those kids with those light-up shoes. They jump, every step they take, light, light, light. And they just jump and they get so excited when they see the light. We have those shoes, guys. We have those shoes at every step. There is a word. There is the word that lights the way. There's a lamp that we have inside of us that lights the way. And we all reach those forks in the road, right? We reach that point where we need to make a difficult decision. We reach that point where there's a mountain right in the smack dab middle of moving forward. We reach that point where we're rejoicing. We reach that point where we just wake up and there's a new day before us and we have to take a step forward. We need to seek God's word to light up the path before us every moment of every day. Every single day, we need to turn on the guiding light. I stole that from the show. The guiding light of his word to lead us and guide us. And this word, this light comes in, in many forms. We know we have the written word, right? We have the written word. Would you uh, buy a new car and say, if, Lord, if it's your will, turn on the lights when it gets dark. Or do you read the instruction manual to figure out how to operate it, what you've been given? That car out there has so many features, I don't know what all it does. It's got air conditioned seats and heated steering wheel. And I, I don't even know how to turn half of it on, but I have a book that I pay good money for all that stuff. But if I don't know how to use it, is it going to do me any good? If it, Lord, if it's your will, turn the air on. But don't we do that sometimes as Christians? When they, God says, I have given you the answers. I have given you the keys to the kingdom. Yes. I have given this to you as a gift. These are God-inspired, God-spoken, the prophets, the historians, the letters to the church to encourage us for our edification, for our instruction. Finding a moment each day, like Tim said, those, are you going to give them the first fruits of the day? Are we going to start our day on our own? Or are we going to start each day with, Lord, just thank you. Just He's with us all the time, but do we talk to him like he's with us all the time? Or do we carve out moments where we have special time? There's nothing wrong with that. But he's with us all the time. And he, I'm telling you guys, that we are coming to this place where gross darkness is all around us. We have got to be able to carry that light with us all the time, every moment. Finding a moment every day to read and to meditate on the scriptures is essential to a well-balanced diet, right? This is our food. To be healthy Christians, we have to have a healthy, balanced diet. We find the scriptures that speak to our heart and we write them down. We meditate on them. We chew on them throughout the day. And we get all of that marrow out of the word. Something just catches our eye sometimes. And, um, you know, there's a thousand different ways to, to be creative and surround yourself with the word. Uh, Psalm 19.14. Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. What we chew on is what we say. And what we say is what we chew on. Yes. So can we agree that let's chew on the word yes. of God? Let's find the promises that speak to us because it goes yes. both ways. What, our, what we start out our day is the tone and the attitude, right, that we leave the house with for the whole day. Philippians 4, 8. Because God makes it easy, right? God doesn't leave us hanging. 
Philippians 4, 8, he even tells us what to meditate on. He makes it pretty simple. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, Tim said it again this morning, you know, once we start counting our blessings, once we start looking to where God is and stop focusing on God where God isn't, suddenly we have a new perspective. Suddenly we're, our attitudes we can hear. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in a funky mood, I don't hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me quite as much as when my heart is soft from praise. My heart is soft from, from hungering after Him. When I'm, when I'm listening, but boy, when I'm in a tiff, it's just me. Hanging out in the darkness, close myself in a closet, hanging out all by myself. I got. Is there any praise in that? No. So we have to catch ourselves. So we need to surround ourselves with this written word. I love Pastor jokes about the post it notes he has all over his mirrors. Write it in lipstick, ladies. You got lipstick. Write it on lipstick on the mirror. Put, put it in post it notes. There's so many fun. My, Michael. Oh, I got a lot of signs in my house. <laughs> He's yeah. very patient. I cut another box, right? Well, that's one of those boxes. I am a child of God. Yeah. Faith can move mountains. Yes. Let it go and let God. I have stuff surrounding me. Yes. Surrounding me, my house, everywhere I go. Expect miracles. That's one of my favorite ones. Get creative and surround yourself with the written word at home, mm-hmm. at work. I try to have calendar. I have a daily calendar. I have a monthly calendar. I have little more little things all over my office reminding me who I am and whose I am. Because I get busy and I get my brain going and my spirit just kind of... But I need to remember every minute in my car. What music am I playing in my car, right, Rita? What music am I choosing? What, what am I hungry for? Am I talking on the phone? Am I gossiping on the phone? Am I worshiping? What pictures, what are my screensavers, you know, right? Screensavers on your tablet, on your phone. What do you spend your time on? Are you looking for what's going on in people? Are we looking to share God's word? Are we looking to share our testimonies of his goodness? Mm -hmm. And y'all are so good about that. I am so encouraged by what my church family shares on Facebook and other social media, whatever it may be, but that's where I spend my time on Facebook. (laughs) Everywhere we go. Uh, Psalm 119. So we have the written word, right? Well, Psalm 119 specifically is talking about the spoken word, right? The word that we speak becomes light or darkness as well. Speech, speaking, utterance, word or words. Not only should we read the word of God, we should speak it out loud. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, that there's something special that happens when we hear the word of God, right? Romans 10, 17. So, um, oh, sorry. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the word of God, our faith is increased. So you know what? If I don't have, and thank goodness, uh, Michael's got all of the the audio files on the website. Anybody that doesn't have the website address, if you ever want to listen to Nathan's preaching, it is so encouraging. We need to hear it over and over again. All of the audio files are available on the church website. He posts links onto them from uh, Facebook all the time. Listen to good good preachers preaching the good word. And if we can't find someone good to listen to, then we can listen to our own voices. We can say it out loud. There's something about praying out loud. There's something about singing out loud. There's something about just reading scriptures, repeating it out loud. You know, it's funny. The world has figured this out. They say good speakers, right, good, good motivational speakers, they have to practice in a mirror and talk to themselves out loud. There's something that happens when we speak it out loud. Because remember, what did God create this world with? It's the spoken word. It wasn't the written word. It was the spoken word. That is the rhema power of God. When we speak, those vibrations, those sound waves, they have power. It's the spoken word that moves mountains. And it's the spoken word that increases our faith when we hear it and the faith of those around us when we hear it. And uh, let's, uh, um, let's go to Luke 8, 5 through 18. Because Jesus talks about this. He talks about the parable of the sower. And we know that the seed is the word of God. And the hearer is described as the ground, right? The ground of receiving the seed. The wayside or the ditch, the rocky ground, the thorns or the good ground. The harvest depends on how we receive the word. 
uh, a sower went out to sow with his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside or in the ditch, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. They didn't care. These are people that went, I don't, I don't care. You're talking about Jesus. You're talking about God. I don't care. There is no God, right? And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. It was someone who thought, man, maybe there's some truth to that. They didn't have anyone else to talk to them. They didn't have anyone else to give them encouragement, to get them plugged in somewhere, to tell them that there was more. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. We've all had those moments, right? We know the enemy comes in to steal that seed. Even if we have some good ground under that, those weeds, those thorns come in to choke it. People, people, people that don't even know what they're doing come in and they speak those words to us. So it's our job to be protectors of our ground of our heart. We're the gardeners of our heart, right? Us and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the other fell on good ground. And sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he hath said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, isn't it funny? He's talking about the, the seed, the spoken word. Well, yeah, you have to have ears. But you don't just have to have ears. You have to hear. Yeah. We have to hear. Yeah, hear. Anybody married in here that's been talking and nobody's hearing? Yeah. There's hearing and there's listening, right? Yeah. we got to listen. We have to receive it. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this, Lord, what are you talking about? You got the seeds, and you got, so we're not farmers. What are you talking about? And Jesus said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then, the devil, then, then come with the devil. And take it the way the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy, and they have no root, which, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation they fall away. And that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which are in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it, and bring forth fruit with patience. That's not my favorite part of being a Christian. Because we have to wait. And not only do we have to wait, we have to protect our hearts as we wait. And not only do we have to protect our hearts, we have to protect our ears. We have to protect our mouths. We have to protect our, we have to renew our minds every day. And we wait. But we have been promised a hundredfold, church. We have been promised a hundredfold. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but sitteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. So take heed, therefore, how you hear. Because we receive that word. We leave here encouraged. We leave here excited. And I'll have someone talk to me Sunday night. What did pastor talk about? And I won't, I won't. I'll have to go look at my notes. Are you kidding me? Like six hours later, it was awesome. What was it about? I don't know. I don't know. It was great. Let me get my notes. I'll get right back to it. That's why I write the scriptures down. Because I can't remember. I, I just know how I feel, right? I heard it. It went in my heart. But did I write it down so I can go back and chew on it? Because it comes in and we love it and we receive it and we're encouraged by it and we leave and we're like, oh, I love our pastor. He's so awesome. I love this church. The word was so good. Yeah. What was the word? I don't know, but it was good. It tasted good, right? It tasted good going down. Yeah. But we are responsible to cultivate it. We are yes. responsible with patience yes. every day to chew on it. Yes. Hearing it is just the first step in creation. Separating the light from the darkness was just the first step. He went through seven days, right? Well, six days of creation, right? Yeah. He saved the best for last, us. Yeah. But he prepared everything before he said, now, now yes. it's ready for you. Right. Now I've prepared everything, I've made it ready, and now I'm going to give it to you. Be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. That's his promise to us today, church, when we will start with the light. Yeah. We'll let him do his creative work. We've got to wait till the seventh day, yeah. and then... Be fruitful and multiply. Yes. 
Just simply walk in it. You can eat all the fruit in the garden you want. You can eat, you can eat whatever you want in the garden, except for that one tree. Except for that one tree. Jesus Christ, the man, was the living word made flesh who came and dwelt among us. Jesus is another form of the word. John 1, 1 through 9. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light that shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. John was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That light is Jesus. We know that the Word is the light. Yes. Jesus was the Word made flesh. He is the light. Yes. And we also know He is the life. Yes. He is the way. He is the truth. Yes. He is everything. Yes. John eight twelve. John 8, 12. Then Jesus spake, uh, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. We don't have to walk in darkness anymore, church. We don't have to. Uh, Psalm 36, 9. Psalm 36, 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light we shall see light. Yes. These are his promises to us. But that wasn't good enough that Jesus just came, right? Because he's ascended. So he gave another promise, the Holy Spirit, right? So now, not only, not only does the Holy Spirit with us, the Holy Spirit is in us. Yes. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all those that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are now the light. And that is a lot of responsibility. But the good news is that he has done all the work, right? Yes. There's a Tasha Cobb song that I was listening to. It's called Your Spirit. And it's all about not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Send your spirit, Lord. Yes. I'm going to have to share it on the Facebook page, y'all, because I listened to it like for an hour last night. You are the fire. Yes. We are the temple. Yes. You are the voice. We are the song. Yes. You are God, and we are your people. And you are the light. You, we stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, God. Yes. Send your spirit. Yes. You call this out. You call this out of the darkness into your love, into your light. Grace upon grace, beauty for ashes. You come to us and we come alive. Mm -hmm. We are just the temple, but... We are a walking, living, breathing, speaking temple. John 16, 12 through 15. John 16, 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear... That shall he speak, and he will show the, you these things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, and therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth that lives yes. in us, 
shall guide us into all truth. He uses those light up shoes. And we know, right? We have that conscience in us. We know it's not really dark, but it's not really light. We get that, mm, that correction, right? Uh, John, 1 John 1, 5 through 7. 1 John 1, 5 through 7. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Sometimes, right, we know the light by how we treat one another. Sometimes the world knows how bright our, our, brightly our light shines by how we treat one another. Right? This world is it's baffling sometimes how people can just be angry all the time. People are just lashing out all the time. We are to be a light. We are to be hope. We are to be grace and truth. Uh, Ephesians 5.14 Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Any one at any time just simply has to call on the name of Jesus. Simply has to just stop and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, bring me back to life. You know, there are moments we get busy, we get tired, we get caught in the doing. And there's moments where I find myself saying, Lord, give me life. Be my strength. There's so much stuff that goes on in this life that if we don't take that time to fill our cup, to go to the well and fill our cup and do what we need to do, we get dry and that light goes a little dimmer. You know, and I, I, I was thinking about the parable of the ten virgins. I'm not going to read the story, but there were five that were wise and five that were foolish. And I was thinking about this the other night, and I'm like, I think I'm a foolish virgin. Because I need to go buy some oil. <laughs> you can't buy the oil, church. How many of you know you can't buy the oil? But in Zephaniah or um, Zechariah, we're connected to the oil source. We should never have to go buy the oil. <laughs> If we come to the point where we're so tired, we just feel like, oh, I'd just rather write a check. Just go buy it. We've missed it. We've missed it, right? I don't know. Am I the only one? Am I, the only, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I guess I just write a check. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Can I just write a check? Been there, right? But God says, no, what are, you, what are you doing? That stuff, this worldly stuff that we get so caught up in, just come and sit with me and I will fill your cup to overflowing. Just come and let me give you cool drink of living water. It's like that Samaritan woman. He said, I'm going to give you something. You'll never be thirsty again. And if I'm thirsty, I need to go drink some of that living water. 1 John 2, 8 through 10. First John 2, 8 through 10. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. But he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. We have responsibility, guys. We can't be in the light. We were talking about it in the testimonies this morning. Things happen. People hurt us. People devastate us. People are people. People are people. We cannot put our hope and our trust in people. We love one another. Love is giving a gift not ex with no expectation. We have got to be purveyors of love and grace. And that is how the light will shine in our hearts. And I'm telling you, there is a freedom that comes with forgiveness. We have that control and that power when we, we chew on all the wrongs that were done to us and we feel vindicated and it feels good in our little pig pen. But I'm telling you, when we let it go, we say, Lord, I'm ready to let it go and move on. And, it, you know, it's like that prodigal son who just, just let me be a servant, Lord. Just 
wallowing in his pig pen, starving, whatever he's doing. He says, I'm going to throw a feast for you. There's a celebration that comes when we can let go and be free of that weight and that darkness leaves us. And we are free in ways we can't even understand because all that just weighs us down and holds us back. 2 Corinthians uh, 3, 1 through 6. And I'm actually going to read this. Um, There's a new translation called the Passion Translation. It's a little controversial. Don't Google it too much. (laughs) But um, it's uh, kind of an allegorical translation um, that Bethel has come out with. Um, Some people don't like it. Some people do. It's just another translation. I like the plain speaking of it. And it comes from a perspective of grace. That's how I interpret this Passion Translation. But... Um, I thought this was a really good translation of 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 6. Are we beginning to sound like those who speak highly of themselves? Do you really need letters of recommendation to validate our ministry like others do? Do we really need your letter of endorsement? Of course not. For your very lives are, are our letters of recommendation, permanently engraved on our hearts, recognized and read by everybody. Church, our lives are letters of endorsement for Jesus Christ, read by everybody all around us. As a result of our ministry, whether you have a ministry or whether you're just living a life, you have a ministry. As a result of our ministry, you are living letters written by Jesus Christ, not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not carved on the stone tablets, but on the tablets of tender hearts. We carry this confidence in our hearts because of our union with Christ before God. Yet we don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strength, for our true confidence flows from God's empowering presence. He alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. Our ministry is not based on the letter of the law, but through the power of the Spirit. The letter of the law kills, but the Spirit pours out life. We have got to remember our life should be pouring out a testimony of God's goodness. We have been forgiven so much, church. And, you know, Jody, you prophesied a few weeks ago that the church needs to pray for wisdom. And I want to encourage everybody here to pray for wisdom. We are in a season, and I hate to say this out loud standing up here, but we are in a season that all things that have been hidden are coming into the light. We are in a season when all of the darkness in us is going to come to the light. And the blessings of this season are going to come through the humble doors. That was a prophecy that was shared, I think, December, January-ish. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, when we let go of that darkness, when we stop trying to hide it and hide it from ourselves, when we are done being deceived that everything's okay, yeah. when we will humble ourselves, there is a special blessing. Yes. Um, the good news is we will be free to walk in the light. Amen. The bad news, we must humble ourselves before the Lord. We must forgive others who have offended us. Yeah. We must leave behind gossip. We must leave behind hatred. Yeah. We must leave behind selfish desires. We must leave behind the distractions that take our focus off of the true light of life. We must love one another unconditionally. Um, I'm going to read just a little bit more out of um, 1 Peter chapter 1 and chapter 2, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls, and this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express the sincere love toward one another passionately and with a pure heart. For through the eternal and living word of God, you have been born again. And this seed that has been planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside of you forever. For human beings are frail and temporary like grass, and the glory of man fleeting like blossoms of the field. The grass dries and withers, and the flowers fall off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was announced to you. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Growing in holiness. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, 
you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. Especially now that you have had a taste of the goodness of the Lord Jehovah and have experienced his kindness. So keep coming to him who is the living stone. Though he was rejected and discarded by men, but chosen by God and is priceless in God's sight. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary for God. We are being assembled together as a sanctuary for God. For now you serve as holy priests, offering up spiritual sacrifices that he readily accepts through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, look, I lay a cornerstone in Zion, a chosen and priceless stone. And whoever believes in him will certainly not be disappointed. As believers, you know his great worth. Indeed, his preciousness is imparted to you. But you, excuse me, but for those who do not believe... The stone that the builder rejected and discarded has now become the cornerstone and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock to trip over. They keep stumbling over the message because they refuse to believe it and this they were destined to do. But you are God's chosen treasure. Let me read that again. But you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. Yes. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. At one time you knew nothing of God's mercy because you hadn't received it yet. But now you are drenched in it. Living godly lives. My divinely loved friends. Since you are resident aliens and foreigners in this world, I appeal to you to divorce yourself from the evil desires that wage war within you. Live honorable lives as you mix with unbelievers, even though they accuse you of being evildoers. For they will see your beautiful works and have a reason to glorify God in the day he visits us. As God's loving servants, you should live in complete freedom, but never use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Recognize the value of every person and continually show love to every believer. Live your lives with great reverence and in holy awe of God. Honor your rulers. So I want to end today um, sharing something that I've shared a bunch of different times, but I just feel like after all the discussion today, it's kind of relevant. One of the first things God taught me was about the totality of his forgiveness. And he described it to me in a picture, as a daydream in my mind. And he, so I'm standing, it's like a movie scene, right? I'm standing in front of this door with cobwebs. I'm in a basement, crime scene tape. And Jesus is with me. And I know that this basement is me. This is, this is, this is me. This is my life. And behind that crime scene tape door with cobwebs is all my sin. All the sin I didn't want anybody to know about. All the sin I never told a soul about. All the stuff that I did that... And Jesus is standing there, and he says, I want you to take me in there. And, Lord, you don't want to go in there. He said, I want you to take me in. And I said, all right, you go. He said, and I looked down, I had a key in my hand. He goes, you have to unlock it. Oh, we have to unlock those doors in our lives. And we have to unlock it and invite the Lord in. So I unlocked the door, and I opened it. And I said, all right, Lord, you go. I can't face it. He said, you have to take me in. I had to go first. And let me tell you, that darkness was full of memories of things yeah. that made me feel unworthy. Mm -hmm. Unworthy. I wanted to die, right? Those moments where you're just so ashamed, you'd just right. rather just not go on. Yeah. And Jesus came in right behind me, and that room filled with light, and it was empty. Jesus. It was empty. Yes. The minute his light filled that room, it was empty. Oh. And I turned. And I looked at him, and I was shocked. And I said, Lord, he said, you're the only one that even remembers. Why do you let these things have power over you? They are as, it is as if it never happened. As far as the east is from the west, it never happened. Why do you let these things have power over you? Church, it's as if it never happened. 
When Jesus looks to us and we are confessing our sins and we're feeling remorseful about things that we've done, he looks at you and he says, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You're the only one that remembers. His blood is eternal. Yes. Our forgiveness, our redemption, our restoration, our newness of life is total and complete. Yes. He sees the glory of Jesus Christ when he looks down on us. He says, you are my temple. Shine that light. Shine that light. Show people how good God is. Show people what a life transformed can do. Show people, this world, what the love and the grace and the mercy of God can do in a person's life. How it can transform their children, their friends, their families. How it can save marriages. How it can redeem someone who values. I mean, it goes on and on, guys. Whatever it is for you. His grace is unbelievable. The price that he has paid. How can we not go forth and shine that light? God is so good. Remember who you are. And just as he told the woman of the well, go and sin no more. But if you do, you go back to that room and you let him shine that light. Let him shine that light. It is redemption every time, Lord. Shine your light. What are we afraid of? What do we think we're hiding? Adam and Eve thought they were hiding. Really? They thought they were hiding. You can't hide? He says, Lo, where are you? He wants to walk with us in the cool of the day. Why are we hiding? He says, I love you. When, when Adam and Eve fell, before we even kicked him out of the garden, he had a plan to redeem them so that he could be one with them again, just like he is now with us. What do we have to hide? What do we have to be ashamed of? Nothing. So rather than hiding, rather than holding back, let's just let it go. And let's just bring that glorious light, that marvelous light. Fill us up, Lord. Light up the darkness. In Jesus' name.